What I just said in Kutsan is a song about the lightning song. The song starts when an old man dreams that he goes to the creation mountain, which is a Vekume, place way up there near Lachlan, Nevada. When he gets to the Vekume, in the south side of it is another mountain. It's called the big mountain, Vivutai. And there also is Vakutinyam, the house of darkness. As he looks up, there's a cloud, and from that cloud came a little boy. The boy was known as Wonder Boy. And he carried one bow and one arrow. He said, I will name everything, and I will tell the story of the land. And he said, but I, I have someone with me who will travel also. He is sick now. As he started the journey, he said, what you see is nothing but a cloud that I come from. He said, up there is my house, and I present it to you. He shows you the house. And he is going to leave that part in that home, and they're going to start their journey. So he says, Miyavats Yanumak. Miyavati Yanumak, Hayamia, Vati Yanumak, Amia Vati Yanumak. And then the coyote shows up, which is Khatalwe. And he said, I too want to present a song about this journey. So he took the arrow off the boy and he wrapped it around his waist like a belt. And he sang. And he said, So he wraps it around his body. This is the beginning of that lightning song. As there are many things they will see. They will see the beginning of the earth. They will see the, the birds and the, they will see the water birds. They will see different creatures. And the journey starts and the cycle starts and they can go come down to the south. So they were going to rename everything and explain the nature of things when they started this journey. He had said that I will name this song Lightning Song, Urav. The Lightning Songs are a relatively recent song, first dreamt by the original dreamer somewhere around the late 1800s. The songs are an affirmation, reaffirming the Quetzalan migration from Avikwame, or Spirit Mountain, west of Laughlin, Nevada, to their present home along the Colorado River. Four will travel on this journey, the original dreamer, the first Quetzalan, Coyote, and Kumatsam Hall the son of the creator, or Wonder Boy, as he's referred to in the songs. As the four leave of Ikume and head south, they will see and describe the places, animals, environment, and people they see along their journey across the traditional lands of the Quetzalan, lands far beyond their current reservation boundaries, reaffirming their historical and cultural connection to this area. From what I understand through the creation, uh, 
the lightning song talks about different areas that are very important uh, to the Kazan people and to others. Uh, the trails that are not the actual trails that we see, but trails that in the spiritual world is talked about and is talked about this earth and the sky and what we would see in the next world. Since the Wonder Boy came down, and he's really the manifestation of the Creator, so when he comes down, he kind of uh, starts getting the characteristics of a human being, but he still has his powers, but he's mortal. So the first sign of his mortality is when uh, he sees a, a heron sitting by the river that they wanted to cross, and he's afraid to cross because his beak is so sharp, he says he's going to stab him. He sees him stabbing him, and he says, but I'm still going to go, so he, even his fear, they cross the river. And he said, they're crossing, they're crossing. He keeps talking about it to get enough courage to go across it. Then they cross it. Well, the songs really uh, tell a story in the way that you would tell oral history. So there are two ways that are told. And I tell mine through the oral history, while others tell theirs through the songs. Everything is represented in the songs. There is nothing about the uh, human, the Kwasan uh, way that is avoided in the songs. They, they, uh, they sing about everything. This was their way of educating. <laughs> Okay, careful where you step when we're here. See the crown there? Oh, from you can here, see the yeah. actual leg and this here and then the arms over there. Come down this way, right mm -hmm. there. So the, the head is over there? That's the head. Where the rocks are? So yeah, actually there's four of them out here. How would they do that? When you dance out here time after time and eventually it's going to create this impact of looking the design. It's not done by coming here somebody just drawing it. It's done by songs. And time after time the area becomes compacted with the compact, yeah. Mm -hmm. The Imperial Valley is a microcosm of the archaeological sites in the United States in that we know that human beings were here at least 10,000 years ago, and there's certainly plenty of evidence of that here in, in the valley. Of course, it depends on who you talk to. It's probably old, older than that, but you know, we won't go into that debate. <laughs> we still have to look at how old it is. You know, even 7,000 may not even be it. It may be older mm -hmm. than that. Yeah, 7,000 just gives everybody an idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, even that idea is old. Compared to that new thing the Americans are trying to create now as sacred or important, this goes beyond that. It goes way beyond that. You can find sites on the surface that are 10,000 years old right next to a site five feet away that's only 2,000 years old. And that being because this desert environment doesn't change. Do they ever have anything with that, the first Tsan uh, that? What did they call him? Kumara Kovek or something. Kumara Kovek? Yeah. Yeah. It could be that, but I think, to me, Kumara Kovek is over there. That's his territory, in Muggins Peak. Uh-huh. Uh, this is well, another... Well, that's where place. they cremated yeah. him, wasn't it? Yeah, they? so that's where he's at. This yeah. here all would be part of Kamat. For a long time, the Kutsan Lightning Song was forgotten. Preston J. Arrowweed, a traditional singer, knows the important knowledge traditional songs hold. This is why he felt it important to revive the Lightning Songs. But I always remember that because we went to the funerals when I was a little boy with my grandmother, and they used to have barrels that they built fires, you know, to warm up the place. I'd lay by the big barrels while it was burning, and then I'd go to sleep listening. Then later on I heard the lightning songs, they're singing. Then they dance and they're dancing in a big circle inside and hear the songs that dance. 
Along with his childhood memories of the songs and notes left by linguist Abe Halprin, Preston was able to breathe life back into the song. The tunes always was in my mind. Once in a while I'd sing a little bit and so forth. But I was still confused, so I asked uh, Halpern, I said, how do you know which song to fit into that? And he said, well, there's basically seven tunes, but if you really sing a certain way, you'll hit eight. But most of the time, it's seven. So if you can fit that song into one of those tunes and it fits right, you're doing it right. So that's how I was able to sing. Now they've come down and they'll be reaching uh, what's now Psalm C, known as Hawil Kutai, meaning the big water, but that's in the Kamiya dialect. The Kamiyas call it Hawil Kutai. When they're over there at that uh, lake, then Kamiyas lived there, and then eventually became Kutsans and all that. Yeah, then so they look further west, and they see the uh, San Jacinto Mountain. In the distance was a mountain, Sakupai, which it means fog barrier, or it carries the clouds. So they say, Sham Kwi they're standing here and scanning it. And then they said they scan it and they see it. Sham Giyuk. Sakupai is really a San Jacinto Mountain near Palm Springs. That's what it's telling, you know. First they scan it, then they get to the base of it, then they, they see that the top of it is white, then they dance up there. And that's the story of the Sakupai mountain. East of there is where the lightning is born. Kui is the, the lightning, Kuhu means the, like scan it because that, the cloud is coming and it's in the distance. Scan that cloud in the distance. Kui Kuhu Maku Vain. Tinyam Khaim Tinyam Gurav Kim Kadav. And so in the darkness there's the lightning, in the darkness there's the lightning. He says. And so that was the birth of the lightning at San Jacinto Mountain or Asakupai in near Palm Springs. So the birth of lightning was over there, and the song is about that. After the birth of lightning, the four leave, traveling south to a place called Hakumba. I have been to almost every location that the song describes, from the mountains where it started, down the river, to the lake where they went by and went to San Jacinto and coming back to Hakumba, and then going towards the ocean, and I've been to a place where it describes the, uh, the, the ocean hitting the shore and shooting up. I've seen that and I described it in the song. From Ensenada, they will travel back north along the coast. It, it also talks about the, uh, the, they hear the sound of a, a coyote howling. 
and he said uh, there was a coyote howling in the ocean, so he called it the sea coyote. And it was really the uh, sea lion, I guess, who was barking. It sounds similar to the coyote. You also see the whale. So the Kamya dialect says, ha kutum, ha is water kutum means throw. So in a way, he's saying water thrower that was coming out of his head. But if you say it in Kutsan, it would say ha tap, tap instead of tum. Now, I often wonder how a tribe or a people figure all of this out and put it together in a song, you know. They say we're very primitive, we were this, we were heathens, we didn't know, but they really had a civilized order. They knew about life. They told it in songs and stories. The, the Wonder Boy says, and now I'm leaving, and then he switches towards the east. But at this point, they're coming towards the Kutsan. The first thing they see is the uh, creosote plant. There's a sand dunes right over there now. Before you reach that sand dunes, there's, there's a lot of creosote plants, and when they came in that direction, the wind was blowing and the sand dunes were swaying back and forth. And he talks about the swaying back and forth. You know, he said, wipe our wipe. So he says, swipe our way, and he sings that. And he starts going in towards the Kutsan land. On the spiritual side, we have these huge ground growings known only to uh, Imperial County and uh, parts of southwestern Arizona. And uh, these tell the creation story of the Indians and uh, the uh, general settlement of the uh, lands that came to be known as the Yuma. So archaeologically, we have uh, uh, several different kinds of spiritual sites and several different kinds of economic uh, sites. The two work together and were absolutely essential one to the other. We have 8,670 sites that have been given out in this county. Any time a project comes through that is either on federal lands, it's using federal money, it's using state money, and it has the potential to negatively impact a site, which means to hurt it in some way, then they have to contact us and find out whether or not a survey has been done and if any sites were found during that survey. This is a really nice Sandokito tool which is, again, going to be probably 10, 12,000 years old. My name is Gordon Osborne. I'm the supervisor for the Kuchan Fish and Game Department. I have worked with the Fish and Game Program well over 30 years. And, you know, yes, we have had sites that have been damaged, either by physically removing sites or drawings or either by just the destruction of it by people either carving their names over petroglyphs or by people shooting at them with the weapons or even the, the turtles that we have out there also. And the turtles, of course, the desert tortoises I'm talking about. In the past, we have found turtles that have been shot or even destroyed that way. Okay, from here on, you'll start seeing small pieces of char laying around. And some of the things you could see Back here, some of the dropping of old concrete and stuff like that laying here. And if you go along, like for instance, this piece right here, you can see it's a piece of char laying on it. You even see the coloring at it. And this particular side right here, there's uh, quite a few of, uh, pieces that are laying here. And back here also, there's another couple of large pieces laying right there. And this whole area here is, you know, literally covered by a lot of the char laying around. You know, we try to you know, keep people out of here or stay away from here also. That way they won't attract people in here. These sites like this right here, this is one reason why we try to protect them. The 
If we find non-Indians out there, you can hear the sites that are there. Well, I hope they, you know, they're courteous enough to leave what is there. There are sites, you know, where you can't watch them 24 hours a day. And, you know, we will go one day, next day, that little piece might be gone. Once something is gone or removed, you know, it's irreplaceable. And you can't put a dollar amount on it. So, Papa, what's some of them shed? It's called Ravens. It's a Ravens, your mom. Your mom done game. They take them yoke him. Your mom, they come yoke him. It's canal. Stalk or what's some. I yoke up. Yeah, they come. Sit go back to wine, go wine, go yoke, or what's called. Svam, your mom, poor him. Yeah, they come. Poet. Yeah, poem. The first Kutsan, and he died in the Kutsan territory. Here, at a place uh, in near Yuma, Arizona, it's called uh, Cottonwood Mountain. That's where he finally dies. And they took him east, and there's a place east of here that looks like a big crater. It's on a mountain. It's a crater, and it's just red inside. This is the place of the first uh, cremation of the Kutsan, a mountain that uh, we call Aura Kyam, the spiritual leaders. One of them, his name was Marahovek. He was the first to say, let me show you the way and how you are to leave this earth into your next life. Those that were able to came, stood here nearby, but those who couldn't could see the fire at the base glowing. The coyote was there, and they knew what he was going to do. He was going to jump in and steal the heart. The wren said, go to the east, bring fire from the sun to cremate this. And so he ran. Then he said to the blue house fly, the giant fly, and it was a female, said, start the fire. So that blue fly went and spun around until it caused friction, started a fire. Then uh, the lizard was there. And he took a torch that lit, and he went and lit the four corners of that prior where the cremation of the body. And the coyote came running back, and he saw it, and he stood there, and he pretended to be crying. Then he danced. He makowak is dancing. Then he jumps in. He takes the heart, and he thou he wa thou, and he the wa thou miyugam. He sees him take the heart. Then he runs off. He takes the heart of thou Vinyawak, Vinyawak. He takes the heart, he's taken it that way. He's gone there and he's gone there and he runs off with a heart. I've been working with Preston Arrowweed for a few years now documenting the lightning song. And I've been to just about every place described in the song. They exist, I've been there, I've seen it. And it makes me sad to think that these places are being threatened. They're threatened by progress. They trash it, they plow it under, they drive over it, not knowing that people have been here for a very long time and that their history is being destroyed. From an additional point of view, I look at it as, you know, well, once it is gone, you know, uh, you can't take a young person out there and stand there and point at something and reflect back at it and say, this is the way it was years ago, this is the way they lived, where they lived at, or how they took care of their place, the place or their people. There are a lot of things in the Indian Pass area. You've got trails that are very close to the road. And the scratched rocks. And, and the scratched rocks, 
that yeah. they can see. Part of the problem, I think, with the scratched rocks is because most of them are very small, and they are things that people can pick up and stick in their car and take off with them. That's true. And you do find places out there where rocks are missing. Mm -hmm. Then you have non-tribal members or non-Indians who come in, you can, they pick it up and you know, they take it, you know, as uh, something as a small treasure to them. They may put it on a, in one of their collections. It's no use to them, but to us, you know, it is part of our history that we are losing, and we will never see it again. Nobody pays any attention to the songs now because they don't know how to speak with songs, so therefore they don't pick it up. And we need to do something before it's lost forever. The first man that started that journey, he's been cremated and he's died. And uh, the coyote st stole his heart and ran. And then the, uh, the, the dreamer, and the Wonder Boy are the only two left now that to start and finish their journey. So pack in you are, 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 so pack in you are. There is just the dreamer and the wonder boy who travel on and then of course they, they hear the, the, the meadow lark singing towards dawn, the, the little badger sitting there waiting for the sun to come up and they reach a house. The, the sun is coming, it shines on the roof and this little mouse is running trying to hide before he gets captured and the, uh, the wonder boy and the the dreamer are near the end when he, he says, now I'm leaving. This particular, this is something that came from BLM. The little petroglyph was confiscated in the 70s. Somebody was trying to take it home. It's probably one of the ideal examples, if you really want to find, for Colorado River petroglyphs, because it has these wonderful scratches, which are really old over here on the side. Then we have the peck circle, which is a motif that shows up so often on that. And then we have, for really added enhancement, this wonderful little quadruped with, with his hands spread out. The major threats to archaeological sites today are people and people alone. And not only with developers, but with uh, those who are, have a quest for recreation and exciting recreation on uh, ATVs. Actually, that sandstone one we rescued from uh, down by Dunaway Road, there's a site. Somebody had gotten stuck in the sand and they'd stuck it under their wheel to get out. Somebody can call up and we can tell them over the phone basically just by them saying, you know, I'm in this particular area there's a really good chance you're going to have a lot of sites in that area. There may not be something or there may be something in there uh, to give them kind of an idea of what's going on. And we think that it helps protect the sites. You know, unfortunately, it's being loved to death. You know, we had huge populations out of San Diego who want a place to come play. And where are they ending up? They're ending up out here because there is nothing left in the San Diego area. So it puts a lot of pressure on this landscape. What can people do? They can learn. Above all, they can learn. And learning has a happy facility of uh, developing a sense of appreciation. Um, when they're out on the landscape, follow the signs, stay on roads, you know. Um, don't drive off roads, those kinds of common sense things that you would normally ask people to do. 
teach people about the desert, about the human qualities of the desert, and how the desert has uh, served people and the beauties of it, and to leave it pretty much as it is. The lightning song is telling again the creation story. That's what it really is, the creation story. And it kind of outlines the, the areas where they went to live. The evidence is all there. All songs are connected to the earth in one way or another, including the, the lightning song. It talks about the plants, it talks about the trees, it talks about the animals, it talks about the sky, and most of all, the most important is where you're going into your next life. In your mommy, Yakro, Yayo, Yak and Mahua, Mahua can now have it. Mam Yak with him, Huanyan's Yenak Yuk, Yam Yuk, Sivam, Yan can now go knock a Yavirk. Yamam Vahma Yavat Yamam Yak, Yadik, Vanya, Vans, Mam Yam Yam Yum, Yan's Vata, Vanya Yam Yuheim. Now I am living when the sun comes up, I am living. I am living when the sun comes up. And whenever you hear the sound up in the sky and the clouds and the thunder, you'll know it's me moving around up there. And whenever you see the lightning flash across the sky, that you will know that I shot this arrow across the sky. And when the sun is coming up, I will go to that sun and I will leave with the sun and I'm going back. But I will always be here. And yeah, the shaman's way of, 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 and yeah, the shaman